Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Kayla and I release new videos every Monday about all things BPD. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification up top. Now today we will be talking about chronic procrastination. Recently, I released a video discussing ADHD in relationship to BPD, the similarities, the differences, and I got some requests to discuss chronic procrastination because we know that with ADHD and then also with the BPD, this uh, chronic emptiness that we all often see, there can oftentimes be this tendency to procrastinate chronically, okay? So I want to spend some time discussing what that looks like, what that is, as well as give you all tools to deal with this if you're someone who suffers from chronic procrastination. Okay, so as the name says it, chronic procrastination is a form of procrastination in an extreme way, meaning that chronically you always or most of the time put off tasks, responsibilities, to-dos, even if there are negative outcomes. So it's more than just oh, there's dishes in the sink and I'm gonna wait a few hours to do them. No, it's about chronically for a lot of different things in your life, you put off. For example, taxes were due at the end of April and it's now June and you're still, you still haven't done them and you keep putting it off, putting it off, even though there's real negative consequences. Um, one of your pets has their shots or vaccines coming up and then you're worried about how much money you're gonna have to spend and so you keep putting it off putting it off putting it off and meanwhile your poor kitty needs the vaccines to stay healthy okay so it it's procrastination in a form that's more extreme that has real consequences and negative outcomes and despite those things, it's it's almost like you're still not able to get yourself to do them. So I'm just gonna read the symptoms off of my list because there are a few and I want to make sure that I capture the essence of all of them. So here we go, okay? So some symptoms relating to chronic anxiety, uh, procrastination is anxiety, okay? So you might have anxiety about the thing which makes it worse, which makes you procrastinate more and more and more. So anxiety would be one of them. Another thing would be an aversion to completing tasks, okay? So not only do you not want to do them, it's you have this almost like physiological reaction of disgust or something to not wanting to do the task. And you might even go out of your way to avoid it completely. So not see it, not talk about it. Um, you might develop mechanisms to that plays into this aversion that you're having to, okay? So aversion, anxiety, something else would be delaying in the task performance. So as I said, taxes are due, it's now two months overdue and you keep delaying, 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 delaying. Um, being distracted, okay? So oftentimes, classic to ADHD, right? We see folks who start something and then just get distracted and kind of forget about it and then they'll do other things and when they come back to it, then they have anxiety because the thing is still not done and then they'll get lost in this anxiety and so they will distract themselves doing something else and then that thing still is not done, which creates more anxiety. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this, okay? Something else, increased stress. Again, this makes a lot of sense. If you keep putting things off and they're having negative consequences and real consequences, for some people it might just urge them or push them to do it. And for those who might suffer from this more chronic procrastination, it might just make them more aversive towards doing the thing. Uh, we have things like lower task performance, overall reduced well-being, and things like regret, regret. Okay. So if the fact that you're procrastinating on things has a negative outcome for other people, you might feel guilt, you might feel shame, you might feel regret. Again, though, those things for you, if you do suffer from this, might actually make you more stuck in not completing the thing, whereas other people might motivate or push them to do the thing. The issue with chronic procrastination or really anything in life that we avoid is that avoiding the thing gives us immediate relief, okay? So if I have social anxiety, for example, and I have plans coming up with people and I cancel my plans and I stay at home, 
Immediately when I cancel my plans, I might feel relief. Oh, thank God, I'm not gonna have to go anymore and see people and be uncomfortable. But then what happens is that the next time that my friends invite me out, then I have more anxiety because I'm thinking, last time I bailed on them last second, are they gonna be mad? Blah, 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 blah. So then I end up canceling on them again, which makes me feel better in the moment. And then the cycle just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay, so with chronic procrastination, we see a lot of this that, oh, I don't wanna do this, I'm just gonna put it off. Um, and by the way, I can think of an example for some reason, I have an aversion to watering my plants. Don't ask me why, but it's like I'll often see my plants and I think, ah, oh, they're due for watering and like they're looking not the best. And then I just think to myself, I'll do it another time, another time, another time. And sometimes it takes me like two, three weeks to water my plants, my poor plants. I have snake plants, so they're they're okay. But it, it's this weird thing that I have with watering my plants. And the plant thing doesn't have that much negative outcome other than, okay, my plants are probably not happy or the healthiest and they might die. It's not like I'm neglecting taking care of my cats, for example, that is something else. However, if you do have this more anxiety driven uh, tendencies when it comes to procrastination, it might lead to procrastinating on things that have more intense and serious outcomes, negative outcomes, okay? So again, I like to give this analogy with my clients. Um, if you have eczema, for example, when the solution to the itch, if it's itchy, is to scratch it. For a bug bite, usually that works. We scratch it, it stops, like it goes away by its own. But with eczema, if it's itchy, and you scratch it, what happens is that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's the same thing with avoidance. Um, the solution oftentimes to anxiety is to avoid the thing, but then the anxiety just gets worse and worse and worse and worse, okay? So let's talk about some of the causes relating to this chronic procrastination. One of the things I can think about just off the top of my head is perfectionism. Perfectionism can often go one of two ways. It can either push us to be overperforming, to not be able to stop, to not be able to say no, to have this relentless standards of perfection. And so we push and we push and we push and we push and we push, okay? However, there is also another side to perfectionism that if you have someone that has perfectionist tendencies, you have a fear of not doing things perfectly. And so if there is a task that you need to do that you think to yourself, mm, I think that it's gonna be impossible for me to do this perfectly, it can either drive you to overwork or to just freeze you altogether and for you to avoid it completely and think I'm just not going to engage because if I engage in this, it's gonna be sucky, it's not gonna be perfect. So I'm just gonna avoid it, avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Okay, so perfectionism might be a cause behind chronic procrastination, which relates perfectly to my next cause, which is this fear of failure. Okay, so fear of failure is also a cause for chronic procrastination because if we have learned this very fixed mindset that failure is bad and it's a representation of who we are as a person, then naturally speaking, we're not going to engage in things that have the potential for us to fail, okay? Which might lead again to another cause, which is this learned helplessness, which is, well, I just, I've never been able to do this. I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do this ever. Nothing's ever going to change. So I'm just going to avoid it and never try because, I'm scared of failure or I can't do this perfectly. Okay, so we kind of see how all these causes are intertwined um, and depending on your own life circumstances, there might be other things too that I'm obviously not capturing for you. These are just general tendencies that I notice with my own clients that for my own things, sometimes that I have more of this chronic procrastination, like watering my plants, for example, because sometimes it just, requires all this effort or sometimes it's because I'm scared well my plants require all this work and I can't do this well and so I don't have the time and maybe it's not in line with your values and so checking in with those things might give you good insight into what is causing your own form of chronic procrastination. So now we have an understanding of what it looks like, why it happens, let's talk about how to help. So first things first is 
if you do have ADHD, okay, and BPD, but specifically ADHD, recommend talking to your primary physician to discuss potential medication. Medication can really help in terms of helping you focus, helping you stay on task, helping you utilize your energy in ways that are effective and in line with your goals and your values. Okay, so medication can be a great place to start. Second thing that I would recommend is to break down the thing that you have to do into really small and manageable steps. For example, if you are trying to run a marathon, it's not realistic to, to think, okay, I've never ran before in my whole life. Um, now today I'm just gonna go and run 20 kilometers as a practice and run that half marathon, that's a great place to start. No, you're going to destroy your body. That's not going, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay. So really small steps would be, can I just get my shoes next to the door? And I don't need to do anything for this day. Just put the shoes next to the door. Okay. And tomorrow I just put my shoes on in the house and I don't go outside. And then the next day I put my shoes on and I stand outside. And then the next day I put my shoes on and I stand outside and then I walk 500 meters and I come back and and then you walk maybe two minutes and three minutes and then you just go for a walk and then you start walking regularly and then throughout those walks you run 30 seconds one minute two minutes right so you're, you're getting the point that really break it down to really small and manageable steps if taxes for example I'm just using this example because taxes are coming up okay if taxes is this thing that year after year you procrastinate chronically, you always wait till the last second or worse, you're always overdue, which penalizes you for your own taxes. If it seems like this big thing that you can do, start small. Okay, so now it's the beginning of 2023. Can I start now just like making a folder for this year on my computer? Okay, cool. Now, next time I have a receipt, can I just save it? So start instead of waiting until, well, now I need to go dig through all the last year's stuff and like I can't, I don't have the time. Start the year before, right? Start just making those folders, starting to place things bit by bit. Can you just call an accountant? Can you just meet? Can you have conversations? So there's different ways to manage this, but really to break it down to small steps. So that'd be number two. Number three, third thing that you could do would be to use positive social pressure, okay? What I mean by this is that personally, I used to have a kind of accountability group uh, with my friends. So we would all give each other challenges or habits that we wanted to build for ourselves. And for example, okay, at what point I wanted to spend more time reading. So my challenge for the month that I gave myself was I'm going to read five minutes a day. And every time that I didn't read five minutes a day, I would give $1 to all of my friends in the group. And so it gave us this kind of social pressure, which is, for example, Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. One of the reasons that it works so well is that there is this social pressure of if I drink, I'm going to need to come back to the group and face them and feel this almost like social guilt about breaking the thing that we set out to do, which helps to realign us on this path. One of the main things though that I wanna stress from the social pressure is making sure that you're, the group of people that you're getting this system or tool from are people who are extremely compassionate and understanding, okay? You don't wanna put yourself in a group of people that you're gonna get this social pressure from, but they're actually all, they're, it's not healthy. All they're doing is shaming you and telling you that you suck and that you keep failing and you're the worst. That's not the kind of group that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a group of people, so my group of friends that when we were doing this, it was like, hey, I got COVID and I'm really sick. I'm not gonna be able to read for the next four days no problem, right? We understand, we understand that and like feel better. That's the main thing. So those are some of the things that you can do. Medication, potential ADHD, if you do have it, breaking it down to small manageable steps, getting a social 
group that gives you some form of healthy reinforcement for the things that you're trying to do. Two last things that I will recommend would be to limit distractions. So if you know that, um, I'm going back to taxes, but taxes is always this thing and you you keep trying to do them at home and it's not working because your cats are bothering you or you have kids or this or that. Rent an office space for a day or go somewhere, go to Starbucks, go do something and limit your distractions that you might have at home. Something else would be set a time limit, okay? So, watering my plants. If I set a timer on my phone and tell myself, I'm gonna do this within the next half hour or in half an hour, I will do this. When the timer goes off, I water my plants or I have five minutes to water the plants and then that's it, the timer goes off cool, it's done, I can move on with my day. I hope that the information and tips that I just shared with you are helpful and useful. I know personally speaking, when I found out more about perfectionism, which I will link an awesome podcast in the show notes down below, um, I really learned about the ways that perfectionism was actually causing me to procrastinate and it helped to offer more compassion. And so I really hope that all of this gives you more understanding and compassion into your own behaviors, but also tangible tools to help you change the things that are maybe not as effective in your life. On that note, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today. I wish you all an amazing week and I will see you next time for another episode of On The Line.